as was true in Challenge 2. In Challenge 3, your efforts are critical to boosting students' awareness of the importance of keeping detailed written records so that they can develop an accurate picture of the relationships of the model's characteristics to its flight performance. Documentation is very important um, in all phases of the development. If for no other reason, then uh, you, can, you can hand your notes off to somebody else. If it, at some point you have to quit working on a project and someone else takes over for you, um, they know what you've done, what you did wrong, and you certainly learn a lot more from your mistakes than you do from your successes. So uh, it parallels uh, to a great extent what, what we do in our job, and uh, plus the kids are having fun. After students have tested their own designs, they're given a standard model glider of a proven design to investigate in a systematic way through a series of controlled experiments. We made one the other week that was your design. We're using their design this time, and then we'll go back and make a new design for you that will work, that will fly and do tricks or whatever you plan on to do. Last week, you may have taken your dowel rod and shortened it even for your design, but this week, don't. We want to keep it the standard length. That's why it's a standard model. Everybody should be the same. As you probe your students for explanations, you stress the importance of carefully controlling the variables so that their efforts can be observed. During the various trials, your questions help the students understand the importance of performing experiments with the standard model. You help them see that it is adjustable to allow them to investigate controls and variables. They'll do so as they see the effects of varying the wing positions and weight distribution on the glider's flight characteristics. When the gliders are ready for flight testing, students record all variables before every launch. They also record the results of each flight so that the teams can see how the variable values affect the performance of the glider. In some classrooms, students enter this data on a computer to analyze and to create their final design reports. Students tend to look at computers as one of two things, as typewriters or as things to play on. And I think with this project, they're able to see that a computer is truly a tool. As we did all of our scale drawings on computer, uh, the step-by-step -step instructions as to how to build the plane, all of our students did their step-by-step -step instructions with illustrations on the computer. So they're able to see that all of the functions of the computer serve for a purpose so that maybe later in the job world they can see the same thing. Using data collected from their flight tests, students learn how to interpret the data they've recorded. And we're going to make a chart with that data. After we make our chart with that data, we're going to study that chart. Then after we've looked at the data, we're going to use that data to create a graph. During the entire process of building knowledge, you are providing your students the opportunity to live the engineering design experience. They're learning a step-by-step -step procedure to, to get the best results. And no matter what they do, you know, throughout the rest of their life, they're going to have to go through step-by-step -step procedures to get the best desired results. And I think, uh, I think that is, more than anything, a uh, real-world application. After the students have completed the building knowledge phase, they work through the next three phases of the engineering design experience. They apply what they've learned about the standard model to writing a design brief and making design drawings. They then build a prototype based on the design brief and drawings, test it, and evaluate its performance. They showed up, they got their stuff ready, but then they knew they weren't just going to sit there. They needed to get on and then go to you know, the next step that was required. They're going to have to write everything down, and then they move on. But you know, they have time to reflect as they're doing the learning log. So again, they can see where they started at, at the first of the day and where they ended up with. And it, not just as a task, but what did they learn from this to apply it to the next day. When the teams have finalized designs, the class pools its talents to create a book containing building and launching instructions, flight data, and survey results. Both challenges culminate when students present their creations for judging. Each team proudly exhibits the end products for a unique and enjoyable learning experience, an experience that's also taught them the value of teamwork and of sharing ideas. 
Parents, friends, teachers, and engineer mentors are on hand to applaud their achievements and lend support as they watch the final presentations. Hi, I'm Andrew Simpkins, and this is Tracy Tao. We will be your hosts for tonight's presentation. At the beginning of the year, we were given a proposal by Mobility Press, which is a division of Mobility Toys Incorporated. The proposal asked us to entrepreneur a company that would design a kit. The kit would include a toy glider, a manuscript on how to build a toy, and a presentation. The success of SAE's educational programs is due to the teamwork and dedication of many people from both inside and outside the classroom. In my view, there is no substitute for having a way to do project-based education. In my view, there is no substitute for students learning how to work in teams. And in my view, there is no substitute than having the, the synergistic combination of schools, industry, and engineers, all sponsored by SAE, uh, working toward the program of the future. And I believe the World in Motion program is uh, just the start toward that future.